Do you ever step into the practice room and find yourself unsure of exactly what it is you're working on? Do you ever feel like your practicing doesn't have any goal or intention behind it? Well, in this episode, I'm going to talk about one of the most useful tools in a musician's developmental toolbox, the practice log. Stepping into the practice room should never be a game of chance. When you approach your instrument with the intention to practice, you should always have at least one specific thing in mind that you plan to work on. Now, this can be easy to do on a day in which you naturally feel relaxed, focused, or find yourself with a lot of time. But what happens when you only have 20 minutes to dedicate to practicing on that given day? Do you just not practice? Or do you try and cram as much as you can in that short window of time? What about if you're not even feeling particularly inclined to even approach your instrument that day to begin with? I think establishing and developing healthy practice habits can lead to dramatic results over time. The one tool that I've found most effective in helping create these habits is a practice log. I started using a practice log seriously about nine years ago, and I can look back and see that many of the periods of meaningful growth in my musicianship over the last decade have been when I've kept up with my practice log in earnest. To help me with this video, I reached out to Mark Ford, the coordinator of percussion at the University of North Texas and my former professor, to ask him about practice logs. Mark is the first person in my life who suggested using a practice log in my first semester of college. I do remember uh, reading several uh, basically self-help musician books that guide uh, the person, in this case myself as the reader, to utilize uh, some form of written uh, time and goals in terms of how you're going to present uh, what you need to do because we're busy. I mean, you're a busy guy. I'm a busy guy. We're just everybody I know in music that has a career has got a lot going on and we're multitasking constantly. So in order to be effective and be have real a real product that we're proud of, it's important to identify those goals, write them down and, and write out a step by step. In this case, a daily uh, daily goals to, to meet weekly goals, weekly goals to meet a monthly goal, and maybe a monthly goal to meet a semester goal for well or yearly goal. Using a practice log is helpful in so many various ways. First, writing out what I'm going to be working on before I approach my instrument is incredibly helpful for me. This way I'm not just meandering from one thing to the next. I'm being really mindful and choosing exactly what it is I'm going to throw my time and focus toward. When a professional golfer arrives at the driving range, do you think that they just take out any club and start hitting away at buckets of balls? No. They get specific. They're going to take out their 7-iron and work on hitting the ball to the 100-yard target in order to develop their feel for that club. Then they might move to the 125-yard target, and then to the 150, and so on. Or they might move to another club. This commitment to intentional work is really where the power of practice begins. We need to be specific about the sound we hear in our heads, and therefore we need to get specific about what we're practicing in order to realize, in the real world, the sound we're hearing in our heads. Next, using a practice log can be incredibly helpful in tracking the actual results of your practicing over days, weeks, or months. Maintaining a regular account of what you work on in a given day can help inform the starting place of the next practice session. I was going to play a concerto with a guest artist and the guest artist, it's a duo concerto and the guest artist sent me the music and the music was like, I don't know, 28, 29 pages of, of just my part. I went into my music and I started to write in dates. I want to have this much music memorized by this date, by this date. And I knew that if I met my dates, I would have at least two or three weeks at the end just to let the music gel and feel comfortable with it. And I kept hitting those dates like a day or two early. You know what it made me, and it made me feel good? I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm ahead of myself. I'm, I've actually got, I'm ahead of my plan. And by doing so, I felt more and more confident about what I was doing and how I was doing it. And then of course I ended up hitting that final deadline, wow, my, maybe a month before I really had to play the piece. So I had lots of time to, to really feel comfortable with that music as opposed to feeling rushed. If you have one week to work on a piece or specific passage, and you know it has to be worked up to 100 BPM by the end of the week, you might start by playing it much slower on Monday at about 70 BPM. Now on Tuesday, you come back to the piece and it's flowing well at 70 BPM. 
so you decide to bump it up to 75. This process continues on and on over the course of seven days until finally on Sunday, playing the piece at 100 BPM, the performance tempo, comes naturally. Since you know you have the full week to work on it, you don't need to press yourself right away on that first day to drastically bump up the tempo. It would be foolish to try and rush into playing it at the performance tempo if you're still struggling to get it to come across clearly at a slower practice tempo. Because you didn't force yourself to rush through learning it, playing the piece or passage at performance tempo is enjoyable and fun. If you hadn't set this clear path of progress for yourself, there's no telling if you would even enjoy that piece or passage by the end of your time working on it. Another thing that using a practice log can help you with is creating healthy practice habits and some sense of a practice routine. I think that this aspect by far has to be the most meaningful for me personally. Even on days that I don't use my log, I now have a set of stretches and exercise that I do every time I sit down here in my studio, both to practice and to play. These things have become daily check-ins for me that tell me how my body's feeling on that particular day, which in turn helps inform me about what I might need to spend more time on in my practice session. For example, if I can tell my body feels tight or my hands feel restrictive, I'll spend more time upfront working on relaxation and looseness. Or if I do one of my basic coordination exercises and feel unbalanced, I can know that something between my throne height, sitting posture, and pedal tension probably needs some adjustment. Finally, using a practice log can take a lot of pressure off of yourself. I think using a practice log can bring out the pragmatic side of yourself in that you don't overwhelm yourself by trying to change the world in one practice session alone. Real results come through continued days and weeks and months of regular practice work, not just in one single day alone. Also, if you're working with a really tight schedule on any given day and you only have 15 or 20 minutes to practice, maybe even five, having a really clear idea of what you want to work on becomes crucial. There's only one way to create success in any artistic field and that's going to be dedicated, consistent practice. And you cannot wake up in the morning and not make music that day. Now, you may only make music for 30 minutes. I mean, maybe your schedule's crazy that day, or maybe you have a session, or you're involved artistically, but you can't practice. You know, you have to be involved. All of that playing kind of rolls into who you are as a musician. But that dedicated practice of where you have a specific thing that you want to work on, a passage of music you want to feel better about as a player, or maybe you're just working on technical skills or whatever, it could be 20 to 30 minutes could really make a big difference as opposed to not playing that day and then waiting to another day. Being intentional with any smaller chunk of time like that can mean the difference between progress and stagnation or regression. And for the record, I'd rather have 20 minutes of practice seven days a week than 140 minutes of practice one day a week. Now that I've explained why I use a practice log, let me show you how I specifically use a practice log. I use stenography notebooks as my practice journals. I like the vertical division in the paper. Depending on how I'm using the log at any given period of time, I might use one column to track what I practice and the other column to make notes about the practice session as I go along. Sometimes I'll also use both columns strictly for tracking what I'm working on if I don't feel I need to be making notes at that time. At the beginning of my practice routine, I have a specific sequence of events that goes like this. Stretch, big strokes, molar technique, long tones, which takes a few different forms, snare rep, and finally some kind of coordination exercise. If I'm limited for practice time in a day, these are usually the things that I always hit. Depending on the needs of the day, I might spend more time in one part of the routine and less in another. It really just depends on how I'm feeling that day. Now from here, I'll branch out into whatever I'm working on, whether it be a transcription, more coordination exercises, vocabulary, tune learning, improvisation, or anything else. I use a bunch of shorthand language that probably only makes sense to me, but allows me to document the practice session more quickly. For instance, I don't write down large strokes to remind my body of how absolute looseness feels and how the arm mechanism moves together. I just write down big strokes, and I know what that means. I use an M with a circle around it to mean melody, so if I'm working with a specific limb, I'll just write M in RF, melody in right foot. These kind of things are just quick little ways to speed up the documentation process. I think it's important to add a few final thoughts here on using a practice log and practicing in general. Don't let using a practice log turn your practicing or playing of your instrument into a burdensome task. 
A practice log can be so incredibly helpful, but you don't want it to become the inflection point that turns music making into a negative part of your life. Always keep in check the idea that the practice log is a tool that serves you and not the other way around. If you start feeling stifled by using a practice log, take a break from it. I don't use a practice log 365 days a year, but I do use them more often than not. Also, you might find it more useful to schedule in some free play time into your practice. Not every aspect of every practice session needs to be scripted. Remember to leave space in your life to explore your instrument, like you might have when you first started playing your instrument at a younger age. Finally, you never want the documentation of practice to supersede the actual practice itself. It might take a little bit of time and experimentation to figure out exactly what works for you. But once you get a routine down and figure out your own personal terminology, you'll find you're not spending too much time writing things down. Life is not regimentation 24 seven, nor should it be. And if you place that kind of expectation on yourself, you'll most likely be disappointed when you inevitably don't live up to that standard. However, using tools like a practice log can help us define our goals clearly and keep tabs on our ongoing progress. Just like watching a video or hearing a recording of ourselves from years ago can reveal how far we've come, this same sense of accomplishment can be achieved by looking back at previous entries in a practice log. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. If you enjoyed it, be sure to click like below. And if you want more content like this, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Remember, don't take everything I say on here as gospel. You shouldn't. Your musical education can start but should not end on YouTube or the internet. Remember that everything we discuss here from technique, to coordination, to gear, to practice logs, all has to come back to the most important aspect in all of this. The music. Keep the music at the forefront of whatever it is you're working on, and it will be impossible not to make music with others. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.